Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning online service and this Sunday is Rogation Sunday, more about that later. We have so much to be thankful for in this beautiful part of Herefordshire. So we're going to begin our, um, with a wonderful Rogation hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter. Each Regation Sunday is marked with a service or a pilgrimage. We mark the boundaries and bless the land and all, all that there is in it. Sadly, a pilgrimage is not possible at this time, so that today we have Regation around our whole deanery on a grand scale, thanks to modern technology. Praises to God do not stop at Psalm 150. They continue on and on. So today we have Psalm 151 for you. Praising God for this wonderful corner of Herefordshire, our deanery. Now we start at the centre of the earth. Actually, it's at Locke's Garage, which everybody knows is the centre of the universe. And uh, it's on the very edge, the edge of Cagebrook Group. So that's where we start this morning. We praise you, Lord, for all the small businesses in our deanery. Thank you for all those who you continue to work and supply for all our needs. We give you all the thanks and praise for all that you provide for us. Our daily bread, milk and meat, and the fruit of the fields and forest. Our fuel and the clothing on our back. Thank you, Lord. God is my strength and hope. May you, God, give courage, hope, imagination and perseverance to the parents and children who are homeschooling and to the teachers who teach via the internet or here in Madley School and all the schools in the Abbey Deanery. We give you thanks for the new hope 
of ways of being, new ways of learning. We praise you for the joy we find, for new ways of reaching out to one another and to you. We praise and thank you for hills and green pastures that bless us with work, food and peace. We give you thanks and praise for the soil, the sun and rain that help our plants to grow and thrive. We praise and thank you for the love shown in our community, the giving, the sharing, the simple tasks done for one another. We thank you for the empathy, the sympathy, the listening ear of those who are given time for others who are in need of human contact. We praise you and thank you for families and friends who support one another, love one another without barriers who comfort in sadness and celebrate in gladness. Chapter 17, verses 22 to 28. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Now, what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it 
is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands, as if he needed anything, because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them, and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him, and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. The reading is taken from Mark chapter 11, verses 22 to 24. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to the mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in him in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. I do hope you're enjoying our deanery rogation pilgrimage and thanks to everybody who's taken part, we've explored this beautiful area of Hereford. Paul in Acts walked through Acts. He didn't travel nearby, he travelled long distances and it was often a troubled journey, but he walked. So how far have I come? Well, today I'm standing just a few feet from Kingstone Rectory and it's a beautiful area of Hereford. And we've enjoyed the wildlife here the years we've been here. But recently, within 20 yards of our door, we've seen woodpeckers, long-tailed tits, all sorts of other birds, including a heron that catches our fish, and hawks and a kite yesterday, and we heard a cuckoo. There have been butterflies, including brimstone butterfly, a little orange tip and a blue, and um, many other small creatures. In fact, there was a ladybird on me just a few minutes ago. How beautiful is this area? Behind me is a, what was a copse, a lovely willow copse, till a few months ago. And then one day along they came, and heartbroken I watched as they chopped down the trees. It's easy to look at problems and devastation, isn't it? But that's not what God tells us to do. He tells us to look at him, to look to Jesus, and to have hope. Hope is really important at this time. We're meant to be a people of hope, and hope, not despair, a people of faith believing in prayer, and we're reminded of that in our reading from Mark. Whatever you ask in prayer. I've got a, a special little thing I keep on my desk. I don't know if Bernard can focus on it. He's doing a grand job photographing and his cameraman today. A little file, and in, on it it says faith, and a little silver word there, and inside mustard seeds. Mustard seed of faith, just the smallest bit of faith can work wonders. Believing in prayer is really important. And if again you look a bit more carefully at the devastation behind me, you can see there are planting a new crop of willow trees. This actually is a crop here, it's not just a copse, they're cricket bat willows and they are harvested every year, a few years, quite a long time to grow a cricket bat willow, as you can see from some of the trunks around, um, but it is a crop and we see the new crop growing here, new hope for uh, the future. We may have closed churches, we may have closed our doors, but the church is not closed and God's arms are always open to our 
pleas and our heartache and our prayers and our joys. We can worship and praise God wherever we are, even online as we're doing this morning. There is power in praise and worship and power when we praise and worship together and apart. In a moment, we're going to be hearing the words and singing along, I hope. Oh, no, another ladybird. I seem to be attracting them. It must be my white sweater. We're going to be singing to God be the glory. Perhaps for a different tune, but it's just a word of hope from Romans this morning for you to carry in your hearts. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels or demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is our prayer this morning. Nothing separate any of us from his love and we are going to continue praising him to God be the glory.
Let us pray. When we say, Lord, in your wisdom, we invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we give you thanks for your church, and yet we ask, what is your church? It's clearly not our beautiful, empty buildings. Is it a gathering of your people? No, we are not able to gather at the moment. How can we be your church in this strange time, O oh Lord? How can we be your love in the world? How share your eternal message of hope and trust? We turn to you with our questions, O oh Lord. Help us to search, to be creative, and to respond to your love in meaningful and positive ways. Lord, in your wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for your world today. We hold before you our pained and questioning world, those who are frightened, those who are grieving, and those who are working to find solutions to this pandemic through research and study. We remember especially countries in the world where pre-existing conditions such as war and poverty exacerbate the threat of this virus. We remember Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, Pakistan, the poor in India and African countries. Lord, in your wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the beauty of our valleys, hills, and for the rivers running through them. We thank you too for farmers and farm workers who work the land to produce our food, for the lorry drivers and shop workers who play their part in keeping our nation fed. We give thanks for our NHS workers, nurses, doctors, cleaners, etc., and for care workers. And we give thanks for the camaraderie and neighbourly kindness and generosity in our communities as we clap for the NHS on Thursday evenings and care for one another. Lord, in your wisdom, hear our prayer. We pray for our neighbours and our local churches. We give thanks for those who prepare worship, who remind us of your presence and hope. We give thanks for all local initiatives like the Hub in Peter Church, who readily and imaginatively organise volunteers to support the vulnerable, who encourage new and creative responses to our situation, and for those who constantly flag the special needs of those with mental health difficulties, awaiting cancer treatment, and all who are bereaved. We leave a short silence for you to add and name all those in your prayers. Lord, in your wisdom. Hear our prayer. Lord, we ask for strength and patience for all that is challenging us at this time. We praise you and give you thanks for all that is good and beautiful. Lord, in your great love and wisdom, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us join together to say the Lord's Prayer. Please feel free to say whichever words you like to use. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, be done on earth, earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The joy of open doors is that we can see a long way. The felled trees I spoke of earlier mean I can see the glorious sunsets every day. This virus has spread throughout the world, but our eyes have been opened to the world around us and prayer and praise is resounding across the world. Our last song is taken from a video that appeared on Bernard's phone. It is pure praise and reminds us we're not alone. 
that praise extends far beyond our borders. And then Steve and Carol are going to overshadow us with the lovely, encompassing Val de Brennan blessing. Be blessed, bless others, and praise God in all things. The Valder Brennan Blessing Heavenly Father, we take upon ourselves the mantle of authority that Jesus delegates to us 
and in his name we speak to every household in our villages, valleys and hillsides, and say, We bless you in the name of the Lord. We bless your marriages, that they may be strong and whole. We bless the relationship between each marriage partner, that it may be loving, forgiving, merciful and strong. We bless every intergenerational relationship within each household that there may be peace, love and understanding flowing between each one. In Jesus' name we bless every network of wholesome and supportive friendship. We bless your health that you may be strong and well. In Jesus' name we resist any sickness or disease which seeks to invade this deanery. And to every person in the deanery, we say, be well, be strong, be healthy. To any who are sick right now, we say, we bless you in Jesus' name with a speedy recovery. We bless your wealth, that you may have plenty to replace poverty. We bless you to have enough to live and enough to give. We bless the work of your hands, that whatever you turn your hands to, which is wholesome, will be profitable. We bless every wholesome enterprise that is conducted by you, that it may prosper and be successful. We bless the grass of the fields and the hillsides that may, may be strong and nutritious throughout the year. We bless the flocks and herds that they may be well and strong and that they may multiply. We bless our local schools, that they would be secure, safe places for teachers and pupils alike. We bless the children's capacity to learn and develop relationships and we bless their simple trust in Jesus, that their trust will grow and become enriched. We speak to the churches and chapels we bless you in the name of the Lord, that the Holy Spirit and the Word of God may flow out from you in power. We bless the hearts of all who live in our villages and on the hillsides, that you may be quickened to hear and respond to the voice of the living God. We bless all who live and work here that the overspill of the blessings of the presence of the Kingdom of God may fall upon you. Amen.